Hey guys, it's Jessie from Plaid, and welcome to Modern Paint by Number, where we take your favorite classic paint by number and put our own little twist on it so you end up with your own unique work of art. So today for November, we're gonna be painting a vase of poppies. So let's go ahead and find out what supplies we'll need to get started. So first thing we have is our 12 by 12 wood canvas. This is one of my favorite um, surfaces to paint on. You don't need to finish it, it's completely unfinished, but it just absorbs the paint really, really nicely. I've also got some palette paper here, which if you don't know, is just some wax coated paper, and it's great for um, holding your paint and mixing your paint. I've got some paper towels, my water basin for cleaning my brushes. I have my 10 piece variety brush set here. I've just got a few of those brushes. Um, as we go, I'll let you know as I'm painting which brush I'm using when. So just go ahead and have your whole pack out. Um, I also have some um, different items, some miscellaneous tools here today. I've got an old toothbrush, which we're going to be doing a really fun um, technique at the end. So um, if you've got an old toothbrush, you can go ahead and clean it and then just designate it as your painting toothbrush, or you can go to a dollar store um, and get a paintbrush for painting, or I'm sorry, a toothbrush for painting. Um, but I always have one of these in my, my arsenal of painting supplies. And you'll see why, of course. Um, I've also got a ballpoint pen for transferring our template. I've got some tape for my template transferring. Um, and then, like I said, I've got my template. So you can find this template on platonline.com. It's right under um, the Modern Paint by Number section under our Let's Paint tab. Um, and this is listed in the event listing there. So it comes with four pages. So each of the pages has um, one of the tiles for our template. So it, if you cut it out and tape it together, just how it shows you in the instructions, it fits perfectly on our 12 by 12 um, panel. And then the last page that comes with it is the fifth page, and that is our, our color mixing reference guide. So if you've joined us before, you'll know what this is. Um, this is what tells us what colors to paint in each of our sections of our paint by number. So sometimes for these paintings, we do a lot of mixing, so it's nice to have this as a reference as we're painting. Um, and sometimes we're just using the paint straight out of the bottle. But again, it is still nice to have this as a reference for when we're trying to do our paint by number. I also have some Transfer paper here, of course, for transferring our template. Um, I've got a hair dryer here today. You don't necessarily need this at home. Um, I have one just so we can uh, dry our paint by number before we start painting on top of it. But if you're at home, you can feel free to pause the video at that point. Um, you don't necessarily need to have the hair dryer. It's up to you. <clears throat> and then, as always, we are using our amazing Folk Art acrylic paints. Um, they're super rich and creamy. They're definitely our favorites for painting. Um, so the colors we'll be using are apple red. Daffodil yellow, navy blue, wicker white, and classic green. So you can feel free to substitute any of those colors. You really just need something similar to each of those. If you have a different red or a different green, don't sweat it. You can totally use those. I know people are having trouble getting paint right now, so absolutely um, just use whatever you've got at home. And then we've also got a fun little surprise one. We're gonna be putting some treasure gold on our canvas. So if you haven't used treasure gold before, it is one of the most metallic, shiny paints out there. Um, so a lot of times, if you want something that's super metallic for when you're painting, it's going to be solvent-based or alcohol-based. So it's really smelly and it's pretty toxic, um, but this one is super, super shiny. In my opinion, it is the most um, shiny, water-based, non-toxic paint there is out there. Um, so the color we'll be using today in Treasure Gold is Blue Quartz. Um, so feel free to grab a bottle of this because we're going to be using that for some finishing accents on our painting. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and start transferring our template. So I've already cut out my tiles here just to save us some time. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lay those out just like a little puzzle on my canvas. And again, there's a picture um, that comes with the template just in case you need a little visual of how they're laid out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tape those together. Make sure all my edges are lined up. And I wanna make sure not to cover up any of my um, lines that I'm going to transfer. So I'll kind of just tape around those. I'm just gonna tack them together so it doesn't move around. Um, and this is just, I didn't mention that this is just stencil tape. So if you've got masking tape or even scotch tape for this part, that's totally fine. We just wanna keep the um, papers from slipping and sliding as we're transferring. Okay, 
so we have that. I'm not worried about the middle um, being floppy because as long as this, these aren't sliding away from each other, this should be good to go. So I'm going ahead and go, I'm going to grab my transfer paper here. Um, and I've got two pieces I've taped together here so I can fill up my entire uh, canvas, but that shouldn't be a problem. I do that all the time when I don't have a piece big enough. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tape that down. Um, and if you'll notice, this is the folk art transfer paper. It says here, um, this side up, and that's great so you don't ever make any mistakes and you don't end up transferring your whole pattern only to find that you had it um, upside down and none of your pattern transferred. I've definitely done that before, so that's a nice little um, uh, treat that they added to this uh, product, which I really appreciate. Um, but if not, you really can tell. One side's smooth and one side's chalky, and you want the chalky side down. So go ahead and I'm gonna tape this down. Transfer paper doesn't love to stick to tape, so sometimes it can be a little bit finicky when you're trying to tape it in place. So I like to add a little bit more than I probably need just to make sure that it doesn't slide. Okay, that's probably good enough. <clears throat> so then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab my template and place it right back over that. And I'll just tape that in place too, because you don't want it to slide around while you're uh, transferring, of course, because that would mess up your pattern. So for transferring this, um, there's a couple different ways you can do it. I like to use a ballpoint pen to transfer mine. And the reason I do that is because then I can kind of see um, which lines I've already drawn over, especially if you use a colored pen, like a blue pen or a red pen, you can see them um, over the black lines and you know exactly where you've gone over. Um, if you don't have a pen handy, that's okay too. You can just go ahead and grab one of your brushes from your brush set and just use the back side. All you need is the pressure. It doesn't matter if it has ink or not. You can use a stylus if you've got that. You just need to apply the pressure to the lines to transfer your pattern. So, uh, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and use a ballpoint pen just so I can make sure I don't miss any lines. So I'm gonna start up here. And for these flower shapes, they're pretty organic, so if you kind of go quickly and you don't follow the lines exactly, it's not really a big deal for this painting because they're really loose and organic anyway. Once you get to transferring the vase shape, we want to make sure that's pretty exact because we don't want our vase to look wonky. But for the flowers, um, it's okay if they're a little bit looser. And as you're going, you can feel free to transfer um, your numbers as well if you'd like. You can either hang on to this and refer back to them as you go, or you can just go ahead and write your numbers into the spaces as you're transferring. It's totally up to you. It's totally your preference. If you're using like a very dark transfer paper and you'd rather just not add any extra, um, you know, of that chalky material to your painting that you'll have to cover with paint, then I would recommend just kind of using this as a reference guide as you're painting. But um, luckily, this folk art transfer paper is a light gray color, which I love because you can see it really well on um, dark surfaces and light surfaces. It's a great like mid-tone, but it's easy to uh, paint over. Oops, I made a mistake there, so I'm just going to go back and make sure I get that correct line. Just to hit a little bump. Okay. So you can kind of peek underneath and make sure you've got all of your lines transferred. And I can see here that I do. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pull this off. That tape's stuck everywhere. I'm gonna hang on to that and keep an eye on it just in case I wanna refer back to any of those numbers. And we're ready to start painting. So we're going to pull out our color mixing reference guide. So we talked about this in the beginning. This is how we're gonna know what colors to paint in each of our sections on our paint by number before we start uh, putting our own flare on it. So to start, um, we are going to grab some wicker white. So this is just a nice warm white color. Any white will do though. I'm also going to grab some navy blue. And then last but not least, I'm going to grab some apple red. So this is just a really like pretty bright red color. Um, like I said, if you, it's pretty standard though. So if you have a different red at home, that'll totally work. Okay, so for our number one section, 
it's actually just going to be wicker white. That's obviously the background of our painting. It's, there's really no surprise there. So you can't really even see the white. It's up to you whether you'd like to add that to your um, color mixing reference guide or not. It's kind of unnecessary, but um, number one is going to be, you could even write in there white just so you can remember. Um, but that's going to be white. And then our second color, number two, we are going to do a little bit of mixing. We want to put, um, grab a bunch of white and then mix just the tiniest bit of navy blue into it. So we're looking for a very, very, very light colored blue. Almost white, but just a touch of blue. So I like that there. And that's going to be for the base coat, um, the base tone of our vase. So again, clean my brush off. And that's why I like to do it this way, because if, I ever, if ever there's mixing on the painting um, and you need to go back and mix more, you always have this to reference. You always have this to compare to, to make sure you get your color at least as close as you can. And then our third color for our paint, uh, paint by number is going to be our just plain apple red. So I'll put that in there again, just to remember, or in the future, if we're ever painting this painting again, you can kind of keep these documents and you can paint it over um, and you'll have all of this already set up so you won't have to do it again. Okay, so now that we have our color mixing reference guide, we're gonna put it to the side and we can go ahead and we can start painting our canvas. Okay, so once you have your paint by number portion of the painting painted, we can go ahead and we can start adding some embellishments on top to make it look like your own unique piece of artwork. So to do that, we are going to start by painting in some of the green, uh, the green foliage around our plant. So of course you can see here, we've kind of got our vase shape and we've got our blooms painted, um, and of course the background, but all of that needs to be filled in with shapes. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna um, grab some of our classic green. And again, if you don't have, um, this exact color, don't stress. You really could even mix your yellow and navy blue to get a similar green if you needed to. Um, feel free to do that as well. But again, we're using classic green. So to start, we are going to go ahead and grab our um, liner brush. So this is or a number six round or a liner brush or anything similar to that. You can see it's pretty small. Um, we're gonna go ahead and use that to start painting some of our stems. So you can see I wet it here just so I can get, you can see how I'm wetting it and then I'm twisting it so I can get that fine point on my brush because I like it to be nice and sharp for some of those thin lines that we're gonna be painting. So I'm gonna pick up some of my classic green. We're gonna start with just the, the pure classic green then we're gonna do some darker areas and some lighter areas. But to start, we're just gonna use the classic green. And so if you, we're gonna start trying to think about where our um, stems would be. So based on our, our blooms that we've painted, each one is going to have to have some sort of connection to the base of this vase, of course, because they're not just going to be floating in the air. They're, they have to be stemming out of somewhere. So to start, we're going to go ahead up here, and I'm just going to do very loosely. For these poppies, they're kind of like wild poppies. They're kind of going all over the place. Looks like someone just bunched them up from outside and stuck them in a vase. Um, they're very loose. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paint a very thin line. I'm barely going to put any pressure on my brush, so I get a nice thin line. And I'm just going to take that line down between these flowers here. So just a fine line right there. And we're just gonna start by sort of laying out where the stems are going to be. So now I'm gonna draw a line starting the same place, connecting to this guy here. A line there. We'll have to connect this little guy here. We're gonna try to connect them all towards that center area there, and then we'll paint in some greenery there just to kind of finish it off and make it look sort of bunched. So we'll have a stem coming down this way. You can see I'm making them sort of curvy. Like I said, they're sort of like wild poppies. That's how I'm imagining them to be. All stemming back towards the center. And like I said, I'm not worried about these because we're gonna fill all that in with greenery to make it look really um, clustered. So I'm gonna do a little stem, again, going towards the mouth of the vase. 
And then this one's going to kind of come up and over, just as if he were sort of dangling out. He's sort of a droopy flower. So he's going to go in just like that. So now you can see we're starting to sort of see the shape of our bouquet a little bit better. It's starting to make a little bit more sense, not just those um, big red blobs, although the red is beautiful, but they didn't really make sense yet. Um, so we're going to keep going with our greenery. And what we're going to do is we're going to hang on to this brush. We're going to add a little bit of green to this area. And you can see here, I, instead of grabbing my flat brush, I'm kind of hanging on to this round brush because I like that texture. So I'm, before when we were doing just the very tip of our brush and we weren't putting very much pressure on it, now we're basically doing the opposite. I'm sort of smushing my brush gently, don't press very hard, but just smushing my brush down to get that texture for this area because that's going to be all just sort of a, a dark green area. And with this fine brush, you can go around your poppy shapes very easily. So you want it to be clean around your poppies because those are kind of, in the final painting, will kind of be overlapping the green area. So you want to have nice clean edges on those. For the rest of it, we can have some loose texture. So again, I still have my, my small round brush here. And we are just painting around our shapes to sort of fill in this center area. Painting nice and carefully around our poppies. So it looks very full in our vase. We don't have any negative space up here. All right, so you can see I'm kind of ignoring the mouth of our um, vase here or our jar or whatever we want to call this. So we do want to go straight up to the edge of that. We just want to be very careful because you want to keep that nice clean line that we were able to get by using the template. Uh, we want to keep that nice clean line that we were able to follow, but we do want to go up and meet the edge of that. So just very carefully just sort of get closer and closer. You can see as I'm doing here, I'm kind of getting closer and closer, sort of like working up the courage to paint up to that edge. <laughs> That's kind of what it feels like, but I'm just working closer and closer to get the feel for that curve and getting lower and lower and closer and closer to meeting that line. Kind of getting the feel of the curve and then go in closer just with the edge of your brush to get that nice clean dividing line. Okay, so you can see we've got that all filled in. We have it a little bit, um, it's not super opaque right there. We've got some, um, we probably could use another coat of green, but we're not going to worry about it because we're going to go back in with darker and lighter areas or uh, shades of green, so that will get covered up then. So don't worry about that right now. We're going to hang on to our number six round brush and we're keeping with the classic green. And we are going to paint the um, bases of the flowers. So when the stem meets the base of the flower, it's kind of got that little circle there that kind of like cups the flower. Um, so we're just going to paint that. Just, just little lines to sort of suggest those little cups. So you can see here like a little swoopy line right there. Just where the flower attaches to its stem. sort of loose. You don't need to think about this part too much. There. Go ahead and just wipe off the excess paint. And I think that's good for just now. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start adding in some of our darker areas. And to do that, we are going to mix one part navy blue. Oops, that was a lot. One part navy blue and one part classic green. And what we're going to get here is a really nice deep dark green. That's going to be the perfect shadow and the perfect dark tone for all of the greenery that we have just painted onto our base of poppies. See how pretty that is? It's a really nice deep dark green color. 
So of course, whenever I mix paint with my brush on my palette, I always want to clean off my brush before I start actually painting on my canvas. Because if you have too much paint in your brush, it's hard to control how the paint goes onto your canvas. We wanna make sure we can control that. All right, so I'm gonna pick up some of that and we're gonna go in and see where we wanna add some darkness to this. So we definitely wanna add some darkness under the flowers because they would kind of be in shadow. So I'm gonna add just a little bit, a little touch of the dark green there. Just on those lines, they don't have to be completely covering it. We can see some of that original classic green kind of go to the side if you wanted to. And then we're also going to add just some sort of like, um, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe this, just some sort of um, brush strokes to this area, just to kind of imply that there's lots of green there and lots of leaves there sort of poking around, just if, as if you were thinking of um, a real bouquet sitting in a vase. In the middle, they're kind of just all of the, the leaves and the stems sort of just smushed together. So that's kind of what we're going for. We want it to look sort of similar to um, how it would look in real life. So to do that, I'm just gonna put some little random brush strokes going in different directions and they kind of look like leaves. Very random, you don't want them to be in any sort of pattern to look as though there's some really loose greenery going on in this area. We just want to fill it in, we don't want it to be blank to look like maybe there's leaves in there all being smushed together in our vase. And try to go in different directions just as the leaves would be going. And then if you feel like maybe you got a little too dark, you can just, without even cleaning your brush off, go back with your classic green and just sort of lighten it in some areas. I do feel like mine got a little dark there. I went a little bit overboard. So I'm gonna go back and lighten some of the areas. And I, they're kind of blending together now, which I like a lot. I like the way that looks. Okay. So with this dark green, we can go ahead and add some more um, elements to our bouquet. So I'm gonna wet my brush just a little so I can get a nice fine line. Just like we did before, I'm sort of twirling my brush in the paint to get a nice sharp tip on my brush. And I'm gonna do some sort of um, like jagged stems sticking out from our vase of poppies. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna kind of do one up here and they're gonna be very loose, very random. They're kind of almost gonna look like branches. Cause if you look at a vase of poppies, they kind of have these like extra leaves poking out, especially if they're like wild poppies. So kind of like leaves, just little extra branches to make it look really wild and loose. Maybe I'll have one coming out there, sort of behind that one. And you can do them really light and loose, or you can do them a little bit thicker if you wanted to. This way it could be thicker if we wanted. Maybe this guy can be thicker. It's totally up to you. We just want lots of wild foliage coming out of our poppies. We just wanna keep layering because that's how you get it to look realistic. Of course, if we were to be looking at this in real life, it is super layered. All the flowers are in front of each other and behind each other and all the stems are all over the place. So that's how we're gonna paint this painting so that it looks more like it would in real life. That's good for now. Okay, so now that we painted some more of that green, we're gonna go ahead and let it dry a little bit and we're gonna start painting our poppies and we might come back and paint a little more greenery. Of course, we gotta paint the stems in the vase, um, but we're gonna start painting our poppies now and adding some layer and dimension to those. Okay, so we have this beautiful, bright apple red color um, that is the base of our poppies. But of course, poppies um, have all different colors in each flower, so they're orange and they're red, um, and maybe even a little bit yellow on the tips. Maybe they have some burgundy colors in the center, so you wanna give it a lot of variety to make them look real. So to start that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab my number six round brush, and I'm gonna put some daffodil yellow on my palette. And I'm also gonna be using some um, apple red, so if you need more of that, go ahead and put it on now. I've already got some though. And I'm gonna mix those two together. So I'm gonna start with one part red and one part yellow. And we want it to be um, pretty red. We don't want it to get too light. We're looking for a sort of 
sort of an orangey color, but we don't want to stray too far from, you know, the traditional red color of poppies. There we go. So it's a little, definitely lighter than um, just our apple red alone, but it's much more orangey. So with this color, what we're going to start to do is sort of um, give some petals and some dimension to our poppy flowers. So what we're going to do that is by um, just giving them a little more shape. Right now they're kind of just blobs. We want them to look like real flowers. So on this one, what we're going to do is we're going to sort of do a line, squiggly lines on the left and right to sort of imply that there's petals on each side and then petals in the center. So here, I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to start on the left, down to the middle, and on the right, down to the middle. So you can see here how we've sort of um, differentiated that there's different petals there. So we have the center and we have two petals sort of cupping the center and it's looking a lot more like a flower. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to continue doing that on each of our flowers. And you can even make it thicker if you want. Thicker or thinner. Because this will also help to give us um, some sort of shading, some sort of blending as we go too. So we'll do the same thing on each of our flowers. There are similar shapes. Um, well, really, the ones out here, the ones we're going to um, sort of focus on, and then we'll get to the center ones uh, in a minute because they are a little bit different of a shape because they're at a different angle. That's why we painted those um, a little bit differently. You can see I'm being very loose with it. I'm not being super perfect. Each one of them is very different, just how they would be in real life. No two flowers would be exactly the same, that is for sure. So do the same thing on this one. Following the top edge. And for the other ones, they're starting to get a little bit different shaped. So we can kind of do the same um, treatment for this one. Here, we'll do the same thing on this guy. You can see I got a little bit thicker at the top there just by pressing down on my brush. And like I said, we're going to do something different with these guys because, of course, these are all kind of just um, going sort of perpendicular to us. They're sort of pointed up, and then these ones are kind of facing us a little bit more. These are kind of coming out of the front, so we want it to look like that. So to do that, of course, you would see more petals on this one. You wouldn't just see the side view. You'd see the all um, of the petals all around the center, and we're going to end up having to paint that center too. So to start, I'm kind of going to start painting just sort of petal shapes right inside. And again, it can be very loose, and that's why we picked a color. That's why we mixed a color so similar to our base color because it can be really loose, and it just looks like pretty um, shading on our flower. It doesn't look like brand new shapes. If we were to start painting like a really bright orange on it, it would be way too bright um, and it would look just like lines. You want it to look more like um, dimension though. So do the same thing on this one. Again, I'm following the edge of the flower shape. I don't want to change the edge. We like the shape of it. We just want to start adding some color and dimension to the center. Okay. So now that we have that, we can kind of see where we put all of those lines. Um, you can even put here, let's put a little bit of a highlight on this guy, just on the top there. You can see sort of where all of those lines are. We're going to go back and we're going to follow over those lines with a little bit lighter of a color. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mix a little bit more yellow into our mixture because we want it to be a little bit more orange. And we're going to do a little bit um, more painting of those lines and it's going to end up sort of looking like shading without us having to do a lot of blending work. So here I'll show you what I mean. I'll start up here again. I'm going to go right at the top of these lines now. You can see it looks like there's a little bit of dimension up there. You can even do the center now. I'll do the same thing up here. And 
You can see I'm just using the very tip of my brush. I'm barely putting any pressure. That's how I'm getting thin lines. If you wanted to use an even smaller brush, you could definitely do that, but it really, sometimes, it rarely matters the size of the round brush you're using just because you can really easily use um, the tip. It really just depends on the pressure that you're putting on your brush. Of course, there's definitely instances where, you know, a really large one wouldn't work or a really tiny one wouldn't work. But as far as like the medium sized brushes, you really can't go wrong. You just have to vary your pressure. There's exceptions to every rule though. Again, I'm just following those really subtle lines that we've already painted, sort of making them a little bit brighter. You can even add a little more yellow. I kind of like the look of it sort of varying. So you can put some more yellow into some of them if you want. I like the way that looks. We want the, the um, petals of the flowers to look super layered, just how they do in real poppies. paint starts to dry out, if you start running out, feel free to go ahead and mix some more. Okay, maybe add a little bit lighter to some of these areas just to lighten it up because I got sort of light there at the end. Just go back with some of that lighter color. Just sort of unify all the flowers. And we don't want to forget this little guy again right on top of them. Okay, so you can see we've got some really pretty um, orangey light colors going on with our poppies. Now we wanna add some darker colors to our poppies. So to do that, um, I already have on my palette some navy blue and some apple red. So we're going to grab mostly apple red and we're gonna mix just a touch of navy blue in. Mostly apple red with a touch of navy blue. And we're looking for a nice dark burgundy color. And that's going to be sort of the shadow or the darker tones for our poppies. So I like that color there. It's sort of like a purpley wine color. We're gonna use that for the bottoms of our poppies to give them even more dimension. So for the bottoms, I'm kind of gonna start at the bottom and I'm just going to sort of flick my brush upwards so I can see that shadow there. See what I'm doing there? Just to create some dimension, I'm just pulling my brush upwards from the bottom. And by bottom, I mean the base of the flower where we painted that little green area. And I just wanna give it some darkness onto, onto the base of these flowers. You can see how it's really starting to give it some dimension. We'll, we'll go back to these guys right here. Don't forget, because they're a little bit different because they're pointing towards us. So we'll keep up with all of these guys that are more similar. And we'll go back to those in just a sec. So for these two flowers in the center, since we can't see the bottom, we are going to picture um, where would be the lowest place on this flower from our view. So think about it that way. What is the lowest place that we can see on that flower? And that would really be the center, right? The center is of course lower than where the petals sort of rise up out of the center. So we're gonna put this dark purple color, this really beautiful wine color in the center of these. So here I'll show you. Start from the center, and sort of flick out. Looks like kind of like a star. That got pretty dark, but I like it. So I'm gonna add some of this really dark color to the rest of my poppies, just to make them a little more dramatic. OK, 
A. So you can see we've got a ton of dimension now. We're still gonna add a little bit more, but we're gonna kind of switch back to our green for a second. We're kind of going back and forth as some of our colors are drying. Um, and it's just an easy way to organize your painting to kind of do it that way. All right, so um, we're gonna go back with some lighter green. So we did our medium green and then we did our darker green if you remember. So now we are going to mix our classic green with some daffodil yellow to get a lighter green. We're gonna use this to sort of highlight some of the green areas, maybe paint some leaves. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm actually gonna start by painting some leaves. So to add some more shapes and some more um, details to this area, we're gonna do a really easy way to paint leaves, just super loose leaves. We're gonna start by pressing and then pulling up. Pressing and then pulling up, pressing and then pulling up. And you can make them short or long, depending on how long you touch the surface of your canvas. So we're gonna add some leaves just using that same technique, um, just sort of randomly around our poppies. So again, you wanna do lots of layering. So maybe I'll do one coming out of here, press and then pull up. And I want a little bit sharper of a tip, so I'm gonna go back, back with my tip of my brush and correct that a little. I'll do one here, press, pull up. And if you feel like you need to add a little bit of water to your paint, feel free. If you feel like it's getting a little dry, you in there, press, pull up. And you can even do some here on our dark green area. Press, pull up. You don't want to go too much over the vase because we haven't painted that yet. And of course, we got to paint our stems. We're going to get to that in just a minute. Press, pull up. And you can add some more little light colored flicks to little branches and stems if you want. Again, just to give it some more variety. You want it to look realistic. So there'd be all different colors of greens in the center of this bouquet. I always kind of like to stand back and take a look and see how I'm liking it. Maybe add a, this needs to be a little lighter in here, so I'll add some more. And I am liking the way that's looking. Let's go ahead and clean my brush off. We're gonna go back in with some classic green and we're gonna start painting our stems. So to do that, um, we're gonna be very loose again, just kind of how we've been for this entire painting. We want our stems to be straight though. These are gonna be less curved. We kind of have our stems going cur uh, curved up to the top. These are gonna be a little bit stiffer sitting in our vase. So to paint the stems, I, I haven't um, used any other brush besides my number six round for a while. We've been hanging on to this one. Let's put a little bit of water in it. I wanna paint some fairly straight lines. And if they're not perfectly straight, don't stress about it. Um, okay, so if we're thinking of um, the stems in our vase, Typically, you, the stems are cut, right? So at the bottom, they're pretty square because they've been cut with scissors or shears or something. They're not loose. They're not gonna come down into a point like some of our stems up here do. They're gonna be pretty um, uh, sort of like chopped off. So to do that, instead of pulling down, we're gonna pull up. So we start with sort of a round edge, a fat round edge and pull up because that's gonna look like they've been sort of cut out of a garden and put into this vase here. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna start here being as straight as I can. Doesn't need to be perfect. And I'm gonna go in a few different directions, but always bottom to top, of course. We don't want them any to be like side to side or anything like that. They're gonna be sort of loose and random, always going towards the top though. And you can do some thinner and some thicker, just as though they would be in real life. Give it lots of variety so it looks more real. Of course, they would all kind of be similar. Um, if you Again, if you look at a vase of flowers, they're all gonna be similar heights because they're all gonna be sort of touching the bottom, all sort of bunched together. That's looking pretty good. I like the way that looks. So we're gonna leave it at that. I like that number of stems. I'm gonna wash my brush off. 
And then I've got my dark green here. Don't forget, this is where we mixed um, our classic green and navy blue. So if you've uh, ran out, go ahead and mix more of that. And I'm gonna add some darkness to the tops of my um, stems. Right here at the top of my vase, where there would be some shadow from the flowers on top of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just sort of loosely do some brush strokes up there to sort of imply that darkness. And you can see we're kind of going over the line now, but that's okay. We're gonna go back in um, with our treasure gold actually, which will be fun, and add that crisp clean line in again. So again, we just want it to be, look kind of dark up there, like maybe there's some shadow up there where they're all really bunched together and full. Okay, so there, we've got some nice shadow there. Go ahead and wash my brush off. So again, still hanging on to this brush, um, we are going to pick up some just straight daffodil yellow and add a few more highlights to some of our um, flowers and leaves. So yellow is great be for this painting because um, it can be the lightest light for green and the lightest light for red because of course yellow is in both of those colors. So we can go through right now and add some um, super highlights to all of those areas. So again, I'm just going to use the very tip of my brush. You saw how I sort of sharpened it again on my palette. I'm twisting it there to get that nice fine point. And I'm just gonna use, just drag the very tip of this using hardly any pressure along the top edges of some of these petals. So you can see what I mean. Just ever so gently, I'm just dragging it. I'm barely touching my canvas. You can see I'm holding the end of my brush here. I'm not pushing down at all. I'm just sort of skimming the surface. Just dragging it ever so gently. And if it picks up in some areas, that's okay too. It'll look very delicate and pretty. Just dragging it, just barely. And again, I'm focusing on the top sides of each of these petals, where the light would be hitting it most. So we're going to do the same thing for our leaves. So we're going to add a little stroke of the light yellow here and there where there would be light yellow on our green areas. So on our lightest sort of leaves I'm focusing on and I'm adding just a highlight of yellow to those areas. There we go. So that we can see we have a lot more dimension now. We have a lot of layers of colors and it's making it look much more dimensional. All right, still hanging on to the same brush. Haven't switched brushes yet. Still have our number six round. We're gonna pick up some navy blue and this is going to be the center of our poppies. So you can see now they look like pretty red flowers but they don't look like poppies yet and that's because poppies have that signature deep dark, like black almost center. So we're gonna use just for our painting to be a little bit softer we're gonna use some navy blue for our centers, um, but we're gonna make those really deep and dark. So all we're gonna do is I applied some navy blue to my brush and we're gonna just dab the tip um, into a little circular area in the center of our poppy. So here, I'll show you what I mean. I'm just gonna dab it and that's it. We just wanna add that darkness. So I'm gonna dab it again here and that's it. So for, again, we started with these two, so they're a little different than the rest of the flowers, which we know by now. So for the rest of them, you wanna focus sort of where you would see the darkness. So kind of darkness in there, you might see past some of those petals and you would see some darkness in there sort of between the petals. Of course, you wouldn't see it at the bottom because there's petals blocking it, but you would see it right where those petals split, where those petals are separated in the middle. We wanna add some dark blue there. And the reason you want, make sure you wanna add them to all the flowers is because like I said, this is sort of the signature um, the signature way that you know it's a poppy when it has that deep, dark center. Maybe even add a little bit there. All right, so now they really look like poppies. 
Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna put down our um, round brush for a couple minutes. We're gonna pick up our number 10 flat brush. So this is just a small flat brush. Anything that looks like this or similar to this is totally fine. And we're gonna start adding some um, more color and dimension to our vase. And we're gonna add some shadow to the bottom of our painting here. So to do that, I'm gonna mix a light blue color. So I'm actually gonna grab some fresh navy cause I got a bunch of red in there and I don't want any red in my paint for this part. So I'm gonna grab some fresh navy from my bottle. And I'm also gonna grab some more wicker white cause I'm out. And I'm gonna mix a nice light blue color. So I'm gonna do mostly white with a touch of navy. It's already looking kind of dark. I think I grabbed too much navy, so I'm gonna grab some more white. And even some more white. <laughs> this navy goes a long way, so do as I say, not as I do. Grab mostly white with just a touch of navy. Okay, so again, I'm gonna wipe the excess paint off my brush. I don't want all of that paint making my brush really moppy. And we're gonna start um, distinguishing the edge of our vase even more. So we have this really light vase. So I'm gonna grab this light blue, I'm gonna load up my brush, and I'm gonna go along. You can see it's a little bit darker than the blue we have there. And I'm gonna follow the edge, just straight using the um, flat edge of my brush, I'm gonna follow the edge of that vase, just ever so carefully. I'm gonna go right up to the edge that we established when we painted our paint by number. Oops, my got some water on there, so that's how I know I have way too much water in my brush to so make sure it's nice and dry. I don't want all that water on my canvas. So again, it's not much darker than the color that we painted our vase in our paint by number, but we do want it to be a little bit darker. Of course, you don't have the same color because that would sort of defeat the purpose of painting this. You wouldn't be able to see the line. We want it to be a little bit darker, but not much, honestly. We want it to be pretty subtle because we're painting glass. This is a glass vase, so you, you really don't see a lot of shapes and colors in glass, but we do want to make it look, make it look like glass. So again, I'm just really carefully with the flat end of my brush, the flat edge of my brush, I should say, following the lines that we painted during the paint by number portion of this painting. And I'm gonna come down on this side as well. We just really want to make sure that our vase is popping as well. Of course, it's not gonna pop as much as our bright red poppies are, but we do want it to be, you do wanna be able to see it. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to go ahead and we are going to paint a line Again, using the flat edge of our brush, sort of following that crisp edge that we had before. Remember we kind of painted over a little bit with that blue? So we wanna find that edge and we wanna paint a, a swooping line. It should match the same curve as the base because this is sort of a cylindrical vase. And we wanna follow that line and go across. And if you need to find a round item or if you need to go back to your um, template and line it back up, and transfer your line back. If you feel like that would make you more confident, feel free to do that as well. I can still see where my line is though, so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna paint it back in. Okay, so we have that line there. We're gonna add lots of treasure gold um, in the color blue quartz to this face to make it look shiny like glass. Before we do that, we do want to add in our shadow here at the bottom. So I'm going to switch over to my 3 fourths inch flat brush. And I'm going to make this um, light blue just a tiny bit darker. Not much. Don't forget the navy blue goes a long way. I learned that the hard way just a minute ago. Um, but we do want it to be a little bit bluer than what we've got here. That looks good to me. Again, wipe off the excess. And I'm gonna turn my canvas so that it's more comfortable for me because I'm gonna go sort of this way. 
So I've got my brush. I'm holding it at the um, at sort of the, the bottom of it. I'm not holding it too close to where the bristles are. And I've got it so the flat side is sort of um, against the canvas. And we're going to go like this very gently and sort of sketch in a little shadow area here. You can add a little bit of water if you need to. We're going to go right up to it. Just, you know, nothing fancy, nothing super realistic. We just want to make it look like it's sitting on something. We never want our, our objects to be just floating in air. And right now it just looks like it's floating in a white abyss. We want it to be grounded. We want it to look like, as though it's sitting on top of, you know, a dresser or a table or even the floor, but we just don't want it to be floating. We're not sure what the space is sitting on, but we do know that it's sitting. And the reason we know that is because we're painting in this shadow. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water. Sort of soften it a little. And if you feel like it's getting too dark, go back in with some white. It's an easy, easy fix. I feel like mine was getting a little dark, so you can see I just picked up some wicker white and I'm going back in to soften that a little because I felt like it was getting a little bit harsh for what I was looking for. Go right up to that edge there. Just gently. You can see I'm going left and right. I'm never going up and down. Always horizontal. Just sort of, it's like sketching almost. I'm sketching with my paintbrush. We just have that nice soft shadow there now. There we go. Okay, so now we have the majority of our painting finished. We're gonna move on to the really fun part, in my opinion, which is adding the treasure gold. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab um, a fresh piece of palette paper. I'm gonna hang on to this one. I'm not gonna throw it away just yet, just in case I need to use any of these colors again. We're gonna grab some of our treasure gold in blue quartz. So again, I know I said this at the beginning, but this is a great, great paint. It is super duper shiny. If you ever use metallics for your painting or crafting, I highly recommend you pick up a bottle of Treasure Gold. It comes in a ton of colors. Of course, it comes in many beautiful golds, just like in the name. But now it also comes in silvers and jewel tones, um, just coppers and rose golds and um, all kinds of just different beautiful greens and um, silvers, like I said. So um, make sure you pick this up because it's super, super shiny and it's water-based and it's non-toxic which are always great in my opinion when you're painting. Okay, so we are going to grab our number 10 flat brush. You can see how shiny it is on, on my palette even. It looks like a mirror, it's super shiny. You can see the lights in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my number 10 flat brush. I'm gonna pick up some treasure gold and we're gonna follow those lines um, that we painted before. So we're, gonna, we're not gonna do the top one just yet. We're gonna do the um, sides and the bottom. And we sort of based it in that light blue because it'll make our treasure gold really pop be able to see the really beautiful blue color because we painted that blue underneath. You can see it even more this way. We're following bottom of our vase. Okay, so you can see how shiny that is. It looks like, it's going to look like we have a shiny glass um, as our base. So I'm hanging on to this color and I'm hanging on to this brush, my number 10 flat and my blue quartz treasure gold. And I'm gonna start on the left side and I'm gonna do my best to follow the same curve each time I go, but I'm gonna drag to the right. So here, I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna start on the left. I've got my flat brush um, perpendicular to the edge of my base and I'm going to follow that curve and drag and I don't want it to be solid I just want to get that shine follow and drag follow and drag I'm just dragging it and don't forget to make sure you go in the same curved shape as the vase because that's what's going to make it look round if you try to go flat over it it's not going to look round of course our vase is curved that's why we have the curved top and bottom we want it to continue looking round and we're going to do that by dragging in the same direction, in the same curve as our top and bottom. You can see it's really loose 
and sort of dry brushy at times almost, but that's okay. I like that because it really looks like it's clear. We still want to see all of those um, stems beneath it. We don't want to cover those up because of course, if it was a clear glass face, you would totally see those stems, but we do want to see that shine of the treasure gold. You can see how it's starting to look like a shiny glass face. A really simple way, super simple. There's lots of different ways that people paint glass and this is just a really easy, kind of like a hack for it almost. It's almost like a cheat for painting glass. It's a really easy way to do it. Okay, so you can see, you can kind of go as far as you want. You can cover up as much as you want of that of those stems, but I don't want to cover up too much. I want to be able to see those. I just want to see that beautiful blue shine and it looks like we've got a shiny glass base. And for the last step of our painting, we want to add a little bit more beautiful detail. Um, you've got this pure white background. I want to just, you know, jazz it up a little and that's where our toothbrush comes in. So this is a technique called fly specking and a lot of people like to add um, just sort of black dots to their painting. It just gives it pretty detail. Um, it's really a thing that a lot of decorative painters do in folk art paintings. So we're going to dip our brush in water and then we're going to dip our brush in the treasure gold. Uh, and you definitely want to make sure you protect your work surface. If you're working at a nice table or something, you want to put some paper towels down or some, you know, parchment paper or something like that because this does get a little bit messy and also your hands are going to get messy. But don't worry because of course the treasure gold is water-based and non-toxic so it'll just wash right off your hands with soap. So you can see I've got a pretty watery consistency. I've picked up that treasure gold and what I'm going to do, I'm going to practice on my palette first, move my painting aside. I'm going to rake my fingers down the bristles of the brush until it makes these little splatters on my painting. You can see they're really fine little splatters but it's just a really pretty um, sort of finish for your painting. So now that I've kind of got the hang of it, of course you want to splatter in the direction of whatever it is you're trying to splatter. I'm going to sort of focus on the bottom of my painting and add all these pretty little splatters. I just love the way it looks. You can add them anywhere you want. You can add them to the top of your painting. You can add it all over. You can concentrate them in one area. I'm just sort of concentrating on the bottom but I do want it to be pretty random. I don't want it to be too even. You can hear how I'm raking my fingers across the bristles of the toothbrush. And again, you don't want to brush your teeth with this anymore. This is now your painting toothbrush. Go ahead and rinse it off and keep it with your paint brushes. We have that really pretty texture that just adds a little bit more detail to our painting. And that is it for our base of poppies. So thank you so much for joining me for this installment of Modern Paint by Number. Um, make sure to look out, we're dropping these each month. Um, make sure to look out for our next Paint by Number, um, which will be next month, which is December. Um, and thank you so much for joining me and we'll see you next month. Bye. <laughs>